Hey, this is Michael with Brainy Face Project. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. It's nice to see you again. So I am switching over to Affinity Photo from Adobe Photoshop. I know, right? Super scary. I've been using Photoshop since 1997. But the reason I'm doing it is because the cost of Adobe Creative Cloud is going up on a continual basis. And I wanted to have a piece of software that I actually could just install and use without having to pay a monthly fee. So I did a bunch of research. This was a couple years ago, and I made a switch over to Affinity Photo. So as part of this Adobe Exit Plan series, which helps uh, content creators and designers and hobbyists and professionals make a switch over from Adobe Creative Cloud to other software applications, I'm going to be talking about a lot of different tools. And so I wanted to spend some time talking about why I actually made the switch over to Affinity Photo. And that's going to be the point of this video here. So if you have haven't already, uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I'm going to have a lot of videos here where I talk about Affinity Photo, talk about Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher. I'll talk about also vid video editing for DaVinci Resolve. Then I'll have a bunch of ancillary tools that I cover as well. Um, so we'll get into some audio tools and stuff like that along the way. But the primary focus for the Adobe Exit Plan series at the kickoff of the series is the successful um, migration to Affinity Photo. So why did I pick Affinity Photo? Because it rocks. It, I have no relationship to Affinity whatsoever. By the way, Affinity has multiple software applications. They are all created by a company called Serif. Serif is based out of Nottingham, UK, and they were purchased by the same company that owns Canva in March of 2024. So a little interesting fun fact there is the same company that owns Canva owns the Affinity tools, and so I think that's kind of cool. I, I really like Canva as a company and their acquisition. Like this was a very strategic ac acquisition. And I hope that the Serif team is enjoying the relationship that they have with the Canva team because I know those mergers and acquisitions can be pretty trying. But what, what a fantastic uh, purchase, just a really good acquisition. So let me just talk about a couple other software tools here that are in their suite of tools because this factored into my decision to. To go with Affinity Photo. And it's Designer is the first application. These are listed alphabetically at the top here. So Designer, Photo, and Publisher, because I would, I would start with Photo because it's like such a great alternative to Photoshop. But we're going to start with Designer here because if you need to make a switch from Adobe Illustrator, if you have the all apps plan in Creative Cloud, then you need to have something that allows you to draw your logos and do your cartoon characters and stuff like that. I love Illustrator. I spent a lot of time in Illustrator just drawing and having fun. Um, and, and it's really cool to be able to create logos which are based on vector artwork. Vector artwork, by the way, I'll just be peppering in little bits of information for people who are new to design as well because I want this series to appeal to people who don't have Adobe Creative Cloud but they're looking for um, knowledge on how to do content creation and getting into design as well. So this series is also for you as well. But there's a difference between raster artwork and vector artwork. So vector artwork looks like cartoon characters, looks like, I'm sure they have it on the page here. If I scroll down, they'll have some samples. Um, that looks almost photorealistic here. So whoever did this, whomever did this, did a really good job with their vector artwork. But this kind of style here, where you've got the, the lines, the curved lines and the fill patterns and stuff like that. It, this style here, we've got the isometric views of the buildings here. This is done by using vector artwork. And vector artwork is comprised of points in space and mathematical relationships between those points in space that are defined by Bezier curves. And so what that allows you to do is create logos and other images that are very scalable and they do not diminish in size when they get bigger, as opposed to raster artwork, which is comprised of pixels, pixels that says short for picture element. And those dots, if you will, are comprised of different values like red, 
green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And those dots are very important to affect the overall quality of the image that's being output. So if you're doing logos, then you're probably using Adobe Illustrator or you're looking for a tool that will allow you to create that. And that in the Affinity Suite is called Designer. Now, if I go over to Publisher, Publisher is an application that allows you to do page layout. If you're doing brochures, magazines, books, um, stuff like that where you're doing a layout, Publisher is the application for you. This is very similar to Adobe InDesign. Remember Page Maker from back in the day or Quark Express back in the day? I used to love Quark Express version 3.2, I think it was. Man, I, I used the heck out of that application. I think Quark is still around, but a long time ago I made Made the switch over to using other software packages and I'll also talk about some alternative free versions as well as we get deeper into the series but publisher is a really good application that allows you to do page layout no relationship to the now defunct I don't think Microsoft makes it anymore but at one time Microsoft had an application called publisher which was geared towards enthusiasts and amateur um, you know amateurs who wanted to create page layouts as well and um, so had no relationship to that version of publisher so the last one that I want to talk about here is photo and photo is as they say the photo editing software you've been dreaming of and I think back to around 2016 or so when a lot of companies started to make the switch over to subscription based models and the CFOs were sitting there wringing their hands with dollar signs floating above their their head saying yeah if we can change our recurring revenue model and actually have our customers pay on a monthly basis this is going to be really good for our bottom line and Adobe did that and they switched over to a subscription based model when they did that they said you can no longer purchase a license you have to pay us on a monthly basis and if you stop paying Adobe for their creative cloud whether it's a single application or multiple applications it's kind of like the soup Nazi no soup for you now you have no Photoshop for you no illustrator for you you can't use the software at all and in my mind that's not cool and for a lot of us who have these growing lists of subscription fees for Spotify for uh, Apple for Netflix you know like it, it adds up and you kind of have to pick the ones that you want to go with if you have Adobe Creative Cloud as part of your own business it's a no-brainer of course you're going to use it if you have designers that you're employing you need to have compatibility between those applications and you can't have one person using one version another person using a different version this is terrible if you're in the service bureau world is you you can't have incompatibility between applications and that is something that the subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud does solve so it does that quite well but for a lot of other people who are independents and don't have the the money to spend every month or just don't want to because Adobe isn't treating their customers as well as they used to and I had a couple other videos where I talk about the reasons why I'm not going to get into that here but here's the beautiful thing is you now have a software application an award-winning application which allows you to have no subscription anymore and it says right on the website I'm gonna read these words for a one-off payment you can purchase in big bold blue letters affinity photo for Mac OS for Windows for iPad or get the entire suite on all platforms with the universal license no monthly cost whatever you decide are you kidding me they built a time machine where we could go back to actually purchasing software and not having to pay a monthly fee. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. So if Adobe Creative Cloud costs $60 a month for their all apps plan, like it's probably going to cost a lot to buy the software, right? No. If I click buy now, check it out. You can get Affinity Photo. It's $70. That's a one-time fee. If you have a Mac, you can get it for $70. PC is $70. Or you can get it on iPad. This even runs on iPad. For, so for those of you who are like me that love using the Apple Pencil and being able to sketch on screen and do your layouts and stuff, it's a lot of fun to do that. You can run it on your iPad as well. So you can pick one of those if you want or just 
go all in. Remember those other applications that I mentioned where you've got publisher and you've got designer as well? For one fee, for $165, you can have them all. And you can run them on all of the different platforms. The way that Affinity does their licensing is a per user model. That means me, having purchased the license for the software, can actually put it on a Macintosh computer, I can put it on like three of my Windows computers, I can have it on my iPad, and I can use it on all of those devices. What a beautiful licensing model this is. Now, if you have multiple people that, that are using the software, you need to have a license per user. So like my wife using the software, she needs to have her own license if she uses it on her computer. But like if I'm running it on multiple computers, it's perfectly okay to, to use that purchase license on all different platforms. So I have no relationship with Affinity whatsoever. It's July 2025. I'm just saying that this model is fantastic. And so the price is a compelling reason, but price doesn't mean that the software is good. Yes, they have a bunch of different logos here saying that they're award winning and everything. But if I go out, I'm just gonna pull up two different alternatives. One is from a company that's been around forever, Corel, C-O-R-E-L, and they used to have Corel Draw. Do they still have Corel Draw? I don't even know if they do. I think they, they may have gotten rid of Corel Draw. And I used to have a CD with like clip art and stuff like that before I even knew how to draw vector artwork and logos. Like Corel kinda, it was a fun piece of software to use. But they have Paint Shop Pro. And I'm not dissing on um, the Paint Shop Pro. I think it's probably a great piece of software. But what I do want to point out here is it's $99.99 for the full version. And remember, if I go into buy now, it's only $69 for the, the software if I buy the Affinity Photo. So you save $30, but also if you think about it for another, you know, what was it, $164.99, for just another 65 bucks, you have like a really good alternative to Illustrator and you can also do page layouts for your books, brochures, magazine work and stuff like that that you might be doing as well. So anyway, I just wanted to mention this one and that's a paid piece of software. Then another one is called GIMP. And GIMP has been around for a very long time. And this is an open source piece of software. So if cost is the limiting factor for you and you do not have the funds to purchase anything right now, you can get started on GIMP. And GIMP will allow you to understand the basics of using layering, compositing techniques, understanding what channels are, all stuff that I'm gonna be covering in this series here as we go through and start to use Affinity Photo. But the thing about GIMP is, if I open this up, they've got the latest version 3.0.4, and the interface is better. The interface used to be like really super clunky. Icon sizes were, were terrible, but they, they've done a really good job here with the interface. I think it's a lot better. But like if I double click here to do a file open, and I'm just gonna go in, like I can't even type in. I, 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 I like typing the location. I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts and stuff, but okay, I'm gonna have to do the double click. So I'll go into that, go into my content. I'll go into my series. I'll go into my Brainy Face Prompt Lab. I have a series here on the channel. So if you're not subscribed, and this is interesting, make sure that you, you get the Adobe Exit Plan playlist. Um, so make sure you link to that, bookmark that. But then I'm gonna go in and just open up like uh, toys. Okay, so right out of the gate here, like in the interface, I don't get icons for the images and like, Okay, I, I don't see a way here, it's not intuitive. If I click on uh, an image, I can see a preview on the right hand side, but what I don't have is a built out screen here that shows me um, all of the, the preview icons here. So if I open one of these up here, I've got Dr. Ian Malcolm. Okay, I've got, you know, I, th I guess my layers over here on the right hand side. And then I've got just a bunch of tools. The layout's a little bit different. But 
anyway, this is a free piece of software. I just wanted to point that out that if you if you don't have the funds to purchase Affinity Photo, then there is a free piece of software. I'm not going to be spending a lot of time covering GIMP in this series, though. What I do love is Affinity Photo. If I open this application up, and we'll be spending time in the next video getting into the interface and seeing how we, we set up, how to open up files, how to create our own little templates and stuff like that. But the interface just looks good. It feels great. The Serif team did a fantastic job creating a user interface which is really fun to use. There's a fun factor with applications and I have that with Affinity Photo. It feels really good. And it's not quite um, Adobe Photoshop, but it's pretty darn close. And so if I double click, I can see like, oh, there you go. Like visually, I can see a lot of these images that I've been creating. I'm building up a virtual uh, toy collection of vinyl toys that don't exist in the real world here. But uh, those visual thumbnails are certainly like really cool to be able to see and I can just double click and as I'm in the application now I can see my layers palette and I've got this tabbed kind of interface so I've got my layers I've got my channels I've got my transform palettes over here these icons like seriously this looks like Adobe Photoshop's cousin like you can tell they're in the same family together they look so so similar to one another now there's some differences in terms of how you do things and that's what I'm going to be getting into in the series here but for me affinity photo was a really good decision because the price point is right the user interface is really nice and so um, yeah that's basically what I wanted to talk about in the first video here so I'm gonna cut myself off here I've got plenty of other content I'm gonna roll right into the next video now and post it as a separate video so it should be available when you see this so you can get started on the series please like comment subscribe do all the good YouTube stuff it really helps me I'm trying to grow this channel I have a great community of people here in the brainy face project community and I'd like to grow it to an even larger community Community of, of creative individuals who appreciate using good tools to express their creativity and who are trying to reconcile what AI means in this whole process and then also get into photography stuff and how we work with those photographs and digital devices too. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.